In this video, I'm going to explain the I squared C communications protocol as it relates to the ARM microcontrollers, specifically the STM32. The I squared C communication protocol allows a microcontroller to communicate to many devices, specifically as many as 127 devices. There are so many different types of devices that can be used, which include devices like temperature sensors, accelerometers, display devices, a device that you make yourself, and so many other devices because the I squared C is such a popular communication method. And the reason why you're able to communicate to so many devices on two wires is because each one would have an ID and each of these devices would have a unique ID. Some devices have IDs that are hard coded in their circuit and some of them have IDs that are configurable. One example is digital servos, because in a microcontroller project, you may need multiple servos, many of them, and each servo would need its own unique address or ID. So the digital servos allows you to create that ID programmatically. And this is done with only two wires from the microcontroller. And these two wires are SDA and SCL, the data and the clock. Each one of these devices will also have a data and a clock that connect to these two wires. The fact that you can put so many devices on two wires communicating with the microcontroller is what makes this protocol so important and so versatile. One very important consideration, however, is that when you connect this type of protocol in a circuit, you have to include two pull-up resistors on each one on each line. I will use a value of between 4.7k to 10k of resistance. And these values will be good for the number of devices that I have being used on the protocol. But remember that if you in increase the number of devices and you vary the speed that you wish to communicate on this line, you may need a different resistor value. This resistor value is dependent on the capacitance on the line. The formula to determine the resistor value the resistor value is equal to the time constant, which is going to be 1000 nanoseconds in this case, over 0 0.8743 times the capacitance measured on the I squared C lines. I created a, an I squared C protocol video that explains this in detail. I would highly recommend watching that video. The link is in the description. Now let's talk about how this communication is established. In most cases, the microcontroller will be the master. I squared C can be used in master or slave scenarios. The master initiates and stops the communication. The master will establish a start state, and then the master will, uh, will either read or write from the slave devices, and then the master will stop the communication. I'll draw the SDA with a red line, and I'll draw the SCL with a blue line. And let's say that this device has an ID or an address of one, and this one has an address of two. In I squared C, an address is the same thing as an ID. So you're, when you're communicating to a device on the I squared C line, you have to notify which device that you want to speak to. We can't forget the resistors. So we wanna make sure we put those in there. So let's go over a scenario where I read information from a device. Say I wanted to read, a, uh, let's say the device one is a temperature sensor. So it gives us degrees Fahrenheit or gives us some number that could be calculated to a temperature. So the first thing we need to do is the microcontroller needs to become the master and this device, all these devices connected to the I squared C are slaves. So we'll start with the microcontroller establishing the communication. Establish a start condition and the microcontroller will need to determine if this is going to be a read or a write. It has to establish a direction for transfer. And we're always going to start with a write because we need to specify which device or which slave that we want to talk to. So we want to put it into write mode and send the address. And in this case, it's gonna be number one because we wanna to talk to the device, the temperature sensor. The data sheet of the temperature sensor will, will provide all of the information you'll need to establish the correct 
communication. But for simplicity's sake, let's go ahead and just pretend that all we have to do is send the address over the I squared C lines and specify the address of this particular device. So it is ready to send information back. If the transfer sending the address on the I squared C line is successful, an acknowledge or ACK will be received. And when the slave address has been sent, the TXIS flag gets set. And this flag is set automatically by the microcontroller. When the TXIS flag is set, that means that the response on the I squared C line is acknowledged. This is actually called the ACK, the acknowledge. Now we can go into the read operation where we reverse the transfer direction so we can read. We will inform the microcontroller how many bytes we want to read. And now we want to wait for a byte to be received. And we do that by looking at the RXNE flag. This is the read data not empty. So we're going to wait until this is not set. When this is set and it's not empty, which means it's full, then we can capture the data stored in the RXDR register, the read data register. This is a very simplistic explanation of what happens in the communication of I squared C. However, it is important for you to know data being sent and received in more detail because you'll need to be able to read the data sheets and understand what the requirements for each device, the I squared C requirements for each device is. In this set of tutorials, I'm going to be using the ADXL 345 accelerometer. This is an accelerometer that is communicated by the I squared C and you'll see that there is an SDA and there's an SCL line on this board. I'll leave a link in the description for the product page. So if you don't have one, you can pick one up. This is the data sheet for the, the ADXL 345. You'll notice that the communication can be through SPI or I squared C. In the data sheet, you wanna look for the I squared C documentation and that's on page 18. So let's take a look at that. I gave an explanation of this particular accelerometer in a previous video and I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well talking in quite a bit of detail on this part of the communications. There's only two pages dedicated to I squared C so there's not that much information but what it has in this portion of the documentation is very important for I squared C. Quickly you'll notice that it supports two different speeds which is the standard mode and the fast mode. It looks like it doesn't support the fast plus mode, so we can't use that. The address for this board is 0x, 1d, and hex, and is followed by a read-write bit, which means that the seven bits of the address is going to be shifted left one by one bit, and the last bit in the zero place will have the read-write bit. To explain what that means, this is the binary number for zero, x, 1d, hexadecimal for 1d. They're only using seven bits from zero to six. And this bit at the seventh place is not used in the, in the address because the address doesn't go above 127. So we can take all of these numbers and shift it one bit to the left because we need this position for the read and write position, read or write position zero or one. So this would look like this. So now that we've shifted it to the left one, we can use this bit for the read write. This is common for I squared C devices. If you want to read, then this number becomes a one. And now this number is three B, zero X three B. If you want to write, then you would have to put a zero here, and that would be 0x3a. But in most cases, you're just gonna do the left shift for the address, and you're gonna apply a zero or, or one in the last bit, in the zero bit position. This chip also gives you the possibility of changing the address if you already have an address of 1d on the line somewhere with another device. Now let's take a look at how we can communicate with the ADXL 345. As stated before in the introduction of I squared C, the master will start and stop the communication. And that is apparent in the writing, single or multi-byte writing, and then reading as well. 
single and multi-byte reading. And this is a an accelerometer. And you're probably wondering why we have to do any writing to this accelerometer, it just gives output. But you can actually configure the accelerometer to meet specific needs. And just to give an example, on page 22, and I think it's 23 and 24, yeah, this is page 23 of the data sheet. And it shows you all of the registers, the register map, and it'll show you which ones can be read and which ones can be read and written to. And you can see, all the the access data registers which is where you'd have the 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 gravity readings for each axis and it would be held in these registers there are also ones that you can write to and you can specify or configure parameters within this accelerometer and on page 24 it talks about the specifications of the registers themselves we're not going to get into this right now. This is this is more information that you'll need for this particular video. We're just going to be discussing how to communicate I squared C in general for this particular device. So in the single write byte uh, single byte write, you have the master. We the master initiates the start and it writes the slave address on the I squared C line, and the slave will acknowledge that. And remember, this is a write. So we are going to be specifying a particular register address to write to, and then we're going to get an ACK or acknowledge from the slave that that register address for the register address. And then we're going to provide the data for that particular address that we want to be placed into that register. And then we're going to get another acknowledge and then the, the master will stop. So this is a single byte write. On all of the communications, we're going to have to provide the slave address and a register address because we want to specify a register that we want to write to or read from. And the multi-byte write is the same thing for the first two bytes, the slave address, register address, and then you have multiple data that you can write to. And we'll see how this affects the accelerometer and how we write to the addresses using multiple data. For the read, a single byte read is a little bit different. We're going to have the master do a start. It's going to find the device with the slave address. We'll inform which register that we want to read from. And then we're going to do another start. And these are generally called the restart. And you'll provide the read or the slave address again with the read bit, informing that device that we want to read from this register address. And then we're going to get the data from the slave because the data you can see is on the bottom on the slave line. And then the master will provide the stop. And then the same thing happens with the multi-byte read, but we're going to allow the slave to provide us more than one data point. In the STM32 microcontroller, we can provide specifications on how much data that we want to read and how much data that we want to write. There is a number of bytes specifications for the I squared C in the microcontroller that we can adjust. The next thing we want to consider is the timing diagram. Fortunately, in the microcontroller, we have a way to specify timings for the overall I squared C communication using the timings register in the STM32 I squared C set of registers. Mainly, we're going to be looking at the 400. That's the clock frequency. And we have the fall time and the rise time. So we want to make sure that we have these rise times and fall times specified correctly. So we adhere to the timings of this particular device. So we're not going too fast for the device to be able to perform its operations. This is a general overview of the introduction on I squared C and how to or what to consider when setting up the I squared C for the microcontroller and for a specific device. In the next video, we'll take a look at putting together the circuit and initializing the I squared C in the microcontroller and how we write and read from the device using the I squared C. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me.
Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.